let us know below what are your five for this price range because it's a huge price range and there's tons of stuff that you can pick and disagree with and everything like that and i can take the heat so bring it If you watched last week's video, you saw Brian's controversial top bourbons under 40 bucks. Uh, left a couple off. Well, controversial, I, I would say well crafted. Well crafted. Five minutes of prep time. <laughs> Three and a half. There you go. So I decided uh, we'd do 40 to 80, and I would take that round. Um, and why not see if I can make it even more controversial than Brian? So the 40 to 80 range, personally, I think is the sweet spot for bourbon. You find so much good stuff in that range. Um, it's gotta be, at least for me, something super special to go outside that range. And then when I was trying to narrow this list down to five, I quickly realized how impossible this job is because basically the vast majority of bottles behind me fall in the 40 to $80 range. So I had to very quickly look at all of this and just like Brian, I decided some things real quick, which is I wanted to make it to a point that very easily, if I give you this list tomorrow, for the most part, you should be able to get these bottles. Now, the caveat is some of them, you might have like a three month window and you need to pay attention a little bit to get the bottle, but everyone everywhere should be able to get the five bottles that I recommend. All right, Brian, what is your question, sir? Question, Mr. TJ. Point of clarification for myself and the viewing audience. You are copying something I did. Uh-huh. And you feel okay about that? Yes. For the good of the channel. And the good of the people. <laughs> you just took up 35 day. seconds for recognition that you are right. And the best part wow. is it will be edited out, so nobody will know. <laughs> Continue. All right, so the first bottle of my top five, I don't think these guys can argue against at all. It deserves to be on everyone's shelf. If it's not on your shelf tomorrow, when your liquor store opens, you need to go buy this bottle without a doubt. It needs to be on everyone's shelf all the time. If it's not that Red Reed, I don't know what it is. Old Forester 1920. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, that was my everyday drinker. Yeah. You cannot have, I'm going to pour it right now because it's that good. You cannot have a bourbon collection and not have this on your shelf. If you're going to get anything from Old Foe, this is the bottle to get. Uh, you might have some weirdos like Brian that say 1910 is better because you want that sweet toasted note. Uh, but honestly, 1920 is great. It's a good one to get people that want to kind of go into that barrel proof uh, transition. Uh, without actually going fully into a really high barrel proof like the 125, 130 range, it gets you in that 115 range. So Old Foe, 1920, one of the best expressions Old Foe has uh, come out with. Um, I wasn't going to put the Old Foe 117 because that just would violate the rules and just be mean to these guys if that was the first thing I poured. It is $50, it is. but it is highly allocated. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and there are plenty of people that feel like Old Foe 110 is right there with one or or 1910 is right there with 1920. I like how the sample size is one. Just saying. Yeah. There's a couple of people in the and comments that, on the previous yeah. episode that in the comments that. below, please tell us that Chuck and I are right and Brian's wrong. Appreciate yeah. it. We're not saying 1910 is bad. We're just saying 1920 is better. Exactly. All right. Agree to disagree. Bottle number two, I feel like falls right in that same category as 1920 it's another one uh that's so the other caveat i guess you should say i made sure every bottle i have is completely different distillery uh, i wanted to branch out so this is if you're going to go to this distillery there's two bottles you can go with arguably i say this one is generally better uh it can be hit or miss because of it is a single barrel but you have to have a Russell's Reserve single barrel on your list. The caveat that it would go against would be, of course, Rare Breed, which is like $42. Ooh, yeah. 
But honestly, lately, I feel like these Russell Reserves are hitting a little bit better than the Rare Breed. But Rare Breed is much more consistent. So if I have only 45 bucks and I want a really high quality from Turkey, maybe go that way. But right now, these single barrels hit way better. So I'm going to go Russell's Reserve. And this might be the first model of contention. Yeah, leaving Rare Breed off of the list in between 40 and 80 bucks whether it's the rare breed bourbon or the rye yep. um, yeah i, I was seems... of course immediately thinking rare breed mm. rye but Mm-mm. but like so, how yeah. do you argue against russell so the reason i went the russells is it's a great way for you to start branching into single barrels get a relationship with your local liquor store and start uh branching out because it's one of the first ones as we have seen by tasting lots of single barrels, they taste different. You wouldn't think two Russell Reserves can taste completely different and the single barrel can. So that's really exciting with that. So bottle number three is gonna be the most controversial, but there's a reason I chose it. So if you do a little bit of research and learn about this product, you will learn that while this is not uh, something else it really is because they source all their product so it is a great way to get an 80 plus dollar bourbon for about 50 bucks which is a bullet single barrel so bullet is generally for roses product they signed a non-disclosure so they can't officially say it but they've got five I recipe believe. or five yeast strains with two different mash bills sound familiar maybe um so this is a great way to kind of get a four roses barrel strength single barrel without paying the 80 plus uh this right here is a single barrel pick from a local liquor store uh, westport whiskey and wine it is 12 years it's 104 proof and it is delicious i got it for 55 dollars. i mean you really just can't beat the value on that guy so that could be the most controversial you say that, but I mean, I, I, I mean, I like my my bullet product. So the bullet blender select last year, batch mm-hmm. one was was excellent. Um, I'm even a fan of the bolt, the the barrel strength. So, yep. um, you know, I'm 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 willing to hear you out here. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm kind of in the, in the same boat. Actually, I was ready to be like, okay, it's go time. But you know, your justification there was solid. Uh, you sold me. Uh, it might come down to. Uh, what's left on your list and i might circle back to this later the next two no controversy whatsoever guaranteed winners uh but i will both i will say for both they are readily available across the nation some you can find months after you're not supposed to be able to find but there is a golden window that you need to search for these so the first one is probably going to be a contender for the best bourbon of the year of this year for me for 2021. And that is, and they keep hitting it out of the park, the Maker's Mark limited release. So this is 55 to $65, depending like where it's on sale. Costco, I found it for 55. Most places it's 65 to 70 ish. Uh, But it is widely available everyone i know and i've talked to has been able to find it in their area but once it sells out it's gone so you have to be on it in that two three month window um but all the limited editions from makers mark are just starting to hit it out of the park and it's in this price range that it deserves to be there without a doubt i mean watch our video we say it all best value yeah. in bourbon in 2021 is fae one but even previously, the Maker's Limited releases have been fantastic. So. Yeah. I mean, 2021 is not even close to being over. And right. this thing is contention for best of the year, especially at that price point. And with that, there's only one way to finish this list out. And that is the only other thing that can compete for best value in bourbon. Let's go. The Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Which has to be the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Absolutely. Again, this is one that here in Louisville, like when it comes out, uh, you've got to be on it and you got to go buy it. They had uh, at Costco the other day, uh, what was it? Uh, 10 cases for $65, but it was the C9 variation. Almost went and bought a backup. It was very, very close. And 
but you can find it. Uh, you can go to Heaven Hill Distillery. There are also places in the country that you can find, and I've seen people find thing the 18 version or the 19 version because it just sits on the it shelf. Sits there. People <laughs> don't know it. It is a barrel strength. It is 12 years old. It is anywhere from 50 to 75, depending on the local liquor stores and everything like that. It is absolutely delicious and a hitter. There are three variations a year. And generally one or two variations are going to be better than the other. So there's always going to be a favorite, but that's great too, because then you got three variations you can try each year and compare them. So it brings even more value to the uh, tasting of it for that year. So this is my list of five gentlemen do your worst. I, I mean, honestly, like I thought rare breed was the only one on there that I had a strong opinion that should have been there like 1920s my daily drinker um i mean the fae one like good grief elijah craig braille proof those are two yeah. fae one so you know superseded elijah craig braille proof in my mind as the best value in bourbon um so those two i mean right there at the top that this could be the top i mean those two alone could be at the top of any list regardless of price point uh, absolutely and actually, I, I jot in little notes here right before you introduced your Elijah Craig there at the end. I even wrote down like Elijah Craig. I was getting like ready to <laughs> go him. after you. And uh, then you popped that Elijah Craig in there at the end. Um, so well done. You know, honestly, one thing that I feel like is missing, um, it's a product maybe, well, I know it's one we've all enjoyed. Maybe I overvalue it, but where's 1792 bottle and bond? Like right at that 45 that to 55 I love it, uh, but at the same point, like good what I would take out. Yeah, right. So I think if you that's maybe a off, top ten or a top fifteen, but not a top five. Yeah, just doesn't quite crack it, but oh, I do enjoy it. Yep. All right, so uh, let us know below what are your five for this price range because it's a huge price range and there's tons of stuff that you can pick and disagree with and everything like that. And I can take the heat, so bring it. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Stay neat. Our bourbon.